Oh baby, everybody, and we're back. Welcome back to Words with Wayman. I am your host, as always, Matt Wayman. Thank you so much for tuning in. We've got a fantastic episode today. Please welcome to the podcast St. Louis's own Nick Taconi's here. Hey, buddy. Did I get your name right? That's you so did. Cool. You nailed it. Thank it, you for coming. Yeah, my pleasure. I love, too, that you started out with Oh Baby. <laughs> that makes me laugh every time. Because I like saying Oh Baby, so yeah. to hear it at the start, at first I thought it was just like a one-off, and uh -huh. I was like... Oh, he does that. The weird part is like I always open this podcast up with that always, and then my wife just got back from San Francisco, and she's like, "There's this guy out in San Francisco." She's like, "I hate him so much." She's like, "Everything he says, he starts it off with oh baby," <laughs> and then I didn't realize it. I was editing the podcast like two days later, and I was like, "Am I? Is I? The, am I the person she hates?" Am I? You had no idea when she I said that. I had no idea. That's so good. But I was like thinking about it, and I was like, "Why is that weird that he says that?" Yeah. And then I was editing the podcast, and I was like, "Oh God, no, oh, I do that." <laughs> She's like, he's such a little frat boy. He just says, oh, baby, to everything. I was like, all right, well, what I'm I, one of those things. I say, oh, baby, I'm not a frat boy. What I love about it, though, is you say it sassily. There's <laughs> nothing fratty about that at all. It's like, oh, baby. It's like you have a hot dish. I'm an independent something. woman. Yeah, baby, you are. Get done. <laughs> yeah, you are. I was like, we find we better just start the podcast because we were just chatting it away before. Just shooting the breeze. So we got to shoot, <laughs> get it breeze. down on the tape, the digital tape. Uh are oh, you went to film school? Mm -hmm. First question. Yeah. Guys. That's good. <laughs> That's very good. I was like, I should probably start asking these people <laughs> questions on this podcast as opposed <laughs> to just yelling at them. Um, what made you want to go to film school? Um, I started doing like, I did uh, just dumb comedy shorts with my best friend. And uh, we did that for a little while while we were going to like community college and stuff. And I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah. And it's a ridiculous thing to ask an 18 year old what they want to do. Oh, with and their to, like let them take out a hundred thousand dollars worth of loans. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, I went to Merrimack community Nailed college, it. which I was pissed about. Really? I was so mad at my parents. Cause I was like, I want to go to college and I want to go to college get drunk. experience. Is yes. like, yeah. Going to a real college. I was like, yeah, I'm saving money, but I'm missing out on a lot. And I'm like, you were such an idiot. Like I'm they were totally a lot right. for those times. Yeah. Like, Did they push you is. to that? They were like, Hey, well, they were like, look, you can do whatever you want, but they had their ace in their pocket was the fact that I didn't know what I wanted to do. And so they were like, look, you don't know what you want. I was like, Listen. okay, fair point, but hear me out. <laughs> and that, that like, I couldn't argue with that. So I was like, yeah, okay, I'll get gen eds and then figure it out. And then yeah. I decided like towards the end of it, I was like, I took, I had taken some film classes and like had just a shitload of fun with that. And I was mm. like, well, I could do that. I was like, I could probably make a living some maybe i was like that if was, anything that i'd rather be in 18 yeah. or 20 <laughs> exactly i was like at, at least i can do like something that i enjoy I'm or at least make a living off it. of the film industry in st louis missouri <laughs> what and, you do though now uh now i work there's a company in midtown and we make photography mm. and photoshop tutorials so mm. i work for them and i shoot and edit i've been with them for like three years that's awesome um it's the cool thing about it is i have gotten exponentially better at just filmmaking in general just through not necessarily filmmaking, but like editing and mm -hmm. camera. Like I feel comfortable. I used to sweat it, like when people would be like, "Hey, will you uh, will you run camera on this?" And I was yeah. like, "Oh God, I'm gonna mess this up," because like it's yeah, it's a lot of pressure. You don't. You're the one that if you blow it, everybody knows. Dude, I like the. I had like such a. This is an awful <laughs> story, but I had one of the worst times ever. I was shooting a project in school with a friend, and uh, it was with a few friends, and there was a point where I was hitting record. To stop. Like, I had gotten... I had accidentally hit it. So it's filming when we're not rolling. And oh then no. we're ready to do it. And then I hit record again. And it stops recording. We do the action. And then I hit record. I was filming everything in between the takes. How long did that happen for? I don't know. But my friend told me later. And he was like, yeah... Uh, that happened and he was like such a sweetheart about it He's so there's like, like a thing that happened <laughs> oh my god and that like that i have never been that made me neurotic yeah about the whole thing i was like yeah. i can't i can't stomach that so now like thankfully that doesn't happen anymore but because like, you know what the red light means now. I, exactly that's a hard lesson to learn the hard way but an easy it's lesson like to blowing grasp. it on stage really hard you got sometimes you got to blow it and yeah. then you're like i don't want to do that anymore yeah exactly that's i mean the camera's hard and it, all the pressure's on your yeah uh, do you think editing something that like if you do you think you're getting better because you're doing it every single day and just repetition or do you think it's just that you learn taste as you go i think it's both i mm -hmm. think uh learning like i am i'm a lot faster just like in the software mm -hmm. and like being able to do stuff now but i think a lot of it is doing it and then looking at it again it's like it's like listening to an old stand-up bit where you're mm -hmm. like oh i can't believe i was doing it that way when clearly it was this way it's funny or, this way like yeah exactly but 
editing, it's like, oh, why would I leave that in? Like, you know, I yeah. thankfully I can watch stuff from six months ago and be like, oh, I should have cut that out. Intuition, but also you're just more confident in the decisions that you make. You're yeah, like, that's yeah, d- not necessary. Yeah, and it's it's li- like you said, it's the taste. Like you mm-hmm. learn your taste as you go along, and like there have been lessons to to pull out of stuff. Like one thing that I've been all about lately is like emotion of something. Like mm-hmm. there was a quote that. Um, a buddy of mine at work, uh, he is like a really talented editor. His name's Sean Kirkland. But uh, he he was interviewing or asking questions to some other editor. And he was like, edit to the meaning, not what they said. And I was like, oh, what a weird phrase. But like thinking about it, like, I mean, I'll take an hour and a half worth of footage and then condense it down to two minutes. Mm-hmm. And like, it's nothing of what they said in order, but like those people watch that and it is what they were trying to say just in like a condensed form. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of like taking a movie and putting it down into a trailer. Like yeah. it's like, it's still true. Like in the, the essence of what's there, you know, is, is what that movie is about. If it's a good trailer and doesn't give everything away, but yeah. you know, it depends on what you're doing. Yeah. I'm sure you just develop that storyline in your head and like you kind of know where you want this to go and end. Yeah. But, and then another big part of it is like learning how to put that together in your head. Cause that's, that's like, Let's say we shoot for an hour and a half. Mm. I've got to watch that hour and a half footage. God, that's the it's, toughest. That's why I hate editing, editing sometimes. the worst. For I mean, I feel like some people really like that, but like if somebody could pre-edit all the clips and just give me all the clips chopped up and stuff, that'd be the best. Yes. And that's and that's why that, those are the people that get paid a lot of money in yeah. Hollywood. If oh, somebody yeah. else went through and did all the shit work. Oh yeah. And then now and you get to have play like have fun at the end. Yeah, exactly. Which that is the most fun. Like, it is. It's such a slog until you get to like the last like little bit where you're like now you're just adjusting things or you yeah. get to make a little moment and you're mm-hmm. like oh that's so cool and it's like it's like you're like i'm really proud of myself but it's oh. like dude it took forever Six to get to, to that part that hour and a half down yeah what do you got you guys are probably a final cut pro no team. no premiere uh premiere all the way oh, i that. i hate final cut i've never used it i've always been a premiere man myself yeah. we're talking about adobe premiere pro now i'll check know it out cc 2018 cc 2018 for people that don't know and the other big one is final cut pro oh, it's an avid program right i think or something no it, that will oh wait no final cut pro is through apple Okay. So, and then there's Avid Media Composer, which is like old school legacy where they basically, I edited on it in college. Yeah. They basically made a program so confusing to scare people away from trying to be editors. And then, listen, this is going to work out. Exactly. And then, like, everybody, like, Apple was like, well, hey, uh, ours is kind of easy. And it was like, oh, you just made it. Avid do you did what Avid yeah. did, but you did it and made you sense. Just made it user friendly for some reason. Literally, yeah, that's it. Even like iMovie and stuff like that. A lot of those are like just more intuitive than what I heard. That absolutely. One was. And I think the the big thing about iMovie, this is just dumb technical stuff, but iMovie is super basic, and then they kind of dumbed down Final Cut from like mm-hmm. older versions to what it is now, because I think they want people they want to make the jump easier from. Yeah. iMovie to Final Cut because if they get you excited about iMovie, which yeah. is free, you're more likely to spend three hundred dollars on Final Cut. Oh yeah, everybody's shooting video these days. Absolutely, Even if it's just on your phone. We got it on our phone. On our phone now. We got cameras got that the do new it. Apple or I got the new iPhone. That camera's beautiful on that thing. Can I? Yeah, you can play <laughs> with it. <laughs> yeah, no. You can play. <laughs> I was gonna. No, this is dumb. Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> No, uh, there's a lot of uh, insane, insane shit that they're putting in people's pockets now, mm-hmm. and it's it's dumb because there's not enough storage to oh, handle no. all of it now. But people will shoot in 4K, and it will I know. be just footage of them putting their phone in their pocket. That's so cool. And that's it. We're gonna have the most high re- <laughs> high def Levi's pocket <laughs> shots coming out. <laughs> um, you do stand up too. How'd you make the jump from stand up? Because I mean, it's all I. I Here's my thing. I think yeah. it's all one creative spot. So you do film, mm-hmm. comedy comes out of the same creative spot. Yeah. You're just a creative person. That's what I, uh, my theory yeah, is. Yeah, no, I, I think that makes sense. I, uh, I, I've been into comedy way longer than I've been into film. And I came to film because of comedy the shorts yeah it's it's like it shorts like i started doing film and video stuff because we wanted to make funny videos because Mm -hmm. that's like i've always been a fan of just like watching stand-up as a kid or like Mm -hmm. funny movies i get my sense of humor from my dad like a lot of people but he uh one of the ways we bonded was, was real racist (laughs) exactly (laughs) exactly no no uh we like we'd watch and bond over like movies and Mm -hmm. i I fell in love with that when i realized when i first found like stand-up comedy like i don't know 12 years old or something watching comedy central and i realized like oh literally this whole program the reason everybody's there is to literally just make you laugh 
Yeah. There's no plot. There's no narrative. Well, None like of that presents matters. Presents or like premium blend. Yeah, it was Comedy Central presents. presents. And I watched when I found that. Like I, I like watched the shit out of it. Yeah. I couldn't stop. I loved. It. I was mesmerized. I was like, wait. So they just give this one dude a microphone and he just gets to go be funny yes. forever. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. And people like I was like they spent this much money to film it mm-hmm. and then they thought it was good enough to put it on television and the whole reason anybody did it to begin with was just to make you laugh. Yeah. Like, that blew my mind. Which so a weird thing to even really think about. Yeah, yeah, especially when you break it down like that. But mm-hmm. so like I don't know. I I've, I've been I started I want to my goal for my film background is I want to work in comedy film and television. Nice. So I started doing stand up to get better at like writing jokes, understanding comedy and to meet people with like similar goals because I mm-hmm. figured who would want to be in a, a comedy short Who's film? delusional or, enough? Yeah, <laughs> but like a stand-up comedian. Of course. So that was a big thing. Like I started doing that. I started taking improv classes all literally to serve the narrative of me wanting to do comedy film. Improv's the best, I feel like, for writing dialogue and for just like being in the moment on stage. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you get a more realistic bounce back, mm-hmm. which is, they both have their strengths. And But like, yeah, improv is great for stand-up's that. Stand-up's like accelerate it a little bit where it's like it, like what the person say, says back to you might not necessarily be what they'd say in that moment but like yeah. it, when you do improv like the dialogue is just like it would be in between two actual people talking yeah. so it like teaches you how to write dialogue mm-hmm. but yeah. it also teaches you how to think about how another person would react to something that you said to them yeah exactly that's the hard part yeah because like, yeah. good improv is like real time reacting yeah and like cutting to the chase it's and like if, yeah what would yeah you're exactly right yeah so I mean if you can if you can spend enough time in that pool and soak that in enough then maybe it'll come out on a page later if yeah. you're lucky it's like magic too and it's great yeah that and comes then, up all the time on this podcast and <laughs> then whenever it's bad it's like black magic it's yeah, like awful it's like garbage it's like you guys should not be allowed to be on a stage <laughs> at all uh, how long have you been doing improv uh about a year now a little cool. over a year improv yeah. shop yeah improv shop improv i actually shop shout out yeah the i that's such a great space over there so awesome they've they've done a really cool job of like building a great environment for that stuff it's like the coolest improv theater I've ever, or it's just the coolest like theater setup i've ever been in for yeah. comedy yes yeah totally the and side room's great i i don't know it's it's really cool that they found a venue that suited them that perfectly mm-hmm. to give them enough space to have two shows going on but yeah. make it still feel intimate super intimate and that the, the, the main room's huge yeah sits like just enough people yeah this, yeah they uh i was just the fatal bus accident show uh yeah. like last week or whatever like it was a packed room but it like still like there were a lot of people there you can but breathe 12 foot ceilings but it feels yes. like they're low the yes. laughs don't just go out like they know what they're doing when they're setting up a comedy theater yeah. you can tell absolutely and the people that run it are like just super nice warm yeah. and open it's weird like seeing somebody all the time and then later on you find out like oh that guy's like actually a big deal here yeah. and like oh wow he's just, like not he doesn't person. have any of the ego that you would think that somebody might like i built this shop from nothing like there's yeah. none of that bullshit which is really cool i feel like you find that in improv a lot and then maybe you know you'll find out that he's a mon- there are monsters at some point. <laughs> <laughs> but no. uh. improv people are great too and that was the weird part i feel like um because you i went from stand up to improv and i was like wait people are nice wait what is this about <laughs> like you're like wait you're not like upset with me and we're like trying to get the spot that i want yeah yeah it's super collaborative which it's cool it's insane because they all know that they can't do it without somebody else whereas mm-hmm stand-ups know that they have to do it without somebody else yeah it's true but i also think it's kind of nonsense too because like um you should just be doing you anyway you shouldn't necessarily be playing like even there's an argument to say that i mean you shouldn't be playing for yourself up on stage but uh, my argument was if you take care of yourself you're taking care of other people too that's that's a really good i know my story in my head and uh, or not i know my story but i know my character really well yes have fun yeah yeah i think you have to and i do like I love because I love the balance that the two give. Like doing stand up and taking improv classes and like doing improv, that that is so much fun because you get the moments to work and collaborate with people, but mm-hmm. you also get those moments where it's just you. Like after yeah. you've been supporting people for a minute, like some of my best stand up sets have been getting done with class at the improv shop and then going over to a uh, wild card at Crow's yeah. Nest and then having and like in that room is a difficult room oh, yeah. to do. That's a nice way to put that. Yeah, but like you know, you come if if you've had a good night of improv and then you can carry that momentum into that set, like mm-hmm. you can you feel bold enough to fight for that room like you need to to yeah. get that room, which is which is really cool. And I, I love how I don't know, but I think I think the cliches of like improv people are so warm and cuddly versus stand ups are so like angry. Like 
I like both because I, I like an too. I like an angry joke. Yeah. Like I like a mean joke and I like a uh, inclusive joke. Anger comes out of emotion the same way that happiness does. I mean yeah. the ends of the spectrum are great. Yeah, exactly. I just like when people take stances on things. I don't necessarily give a shit what stance it is. Yeah. It could be real wrong, but at least you can got the balls to take a stance on it. Right, right, right. <laughs> What's the there's like a Pete Holmes quote where it's like fuck vanilla? Like yeah. it doesn't matter like just have an opinion. Yeah, Which seriously. Like, it doesn't matter. Don't be that fucking guy that just can't make a decision on something. Right. Right, oh, exactly. Those people. Just and also fuck me. vanilla. Fuck vanilla. Chocolate's hard. better. Chocolate's so much better. I love it. You can like vanilla, you can like chocolate. I don't really give a shit, but I do care if you like this podcast. Before we get out of here, why don't you give everybody out there where they can find you on the internet? Um, I am on Instagram. Whoa. Uh, not Nick9. Uh, that is me. Not and Nick then nine. Not Nick9. <laughs> and then alliteration. And then uh, Nick Ticone on Facebook. I got a website, which is just my name, but it's mostly commercially bios and guys if you're looking for some commercial stuff hit them up (laughs) nobody talk about the fact that i did that nazi voice at the end (laughs) we're never gonna talk about that how that just happened thank you all so much for listening we'll be right back with a part two with nick taconi